Welcome to episode nine of UMFS Live. My name is Nate. I'm the communications specialist at UMFS. I'm thrilled to be joined today by a very special guest. I'm gonna start dialing her in now. We've got Laquita with us this evening. She is a former resident at the UMFS Child and Family Healing in Richmond. Um, she's spoken with some of our students, our residents, at uh, our commencement ceremonies, which marks the completion of treatment for our young people. And there she is, Laquita, thank you for being here. This is amazing. Hello. It's so good to see you. I was so excited on Friday to get to catch up with you for a few minutes. I hadn't talked to you since the pa pandemic began. Um, and I was glad to hear you are staying healthy and your family's healthy. Yes, sir. Good, yes, sir. I'm glad to hear it. Well, we're so thrilled to have you here. This is our ninth episode of UMFS Live, and I couldn't think of a better guest to have than, than one of our former residents, but you're so much more than that. You're a Navy vet, you're a college grad, you're working on another degree, you're a wife, a mother. Um, just tell me, let's go right to the beginning. How, when you were younger, did you end up at the Child and Family Healing Center? What brought you to UMFS? Um... I, uh, my family has always been um, unique, I guess you could say. Um, I had a, uh, a dad who passed away before I was born, um, roughly about a month before I was born. My mother was uh, very badly addicted to drugs, um, and she was a prostitute, um, and um, she lost custody of all her kids. Um, so I started up growing up in Pennsylvania's foster care system. Um, until uh, my grandmother adopted me, my paternal grandmother adopted me. Um, so I spent some years with her, maybe about three or four years with her um, before that became a little bit too much of um, a strain, um, a little bit of uh, familiar issues within the home and just, you know, things not really necessarily, um, you know, coexist it wasn't it wasn't good for you know either one of us um so my grandmother decided to relinquish custody um i actually got into some trouble when i was younger and ended up in chesterfield county's detention um center when i was about 11 ish 10 11 ish um one of the youngest kids actually there um and then i ended up going to jacksonville home for girls after that and then shortly after that i um Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I lost you for a second. We we lost you. You you'd gone uh, from Chesterfield to where? To Jacksonfield Home for Girls okay. in Victoria, um, and then I ended up at UMFS. So you came to UMFS to our Child and Family Healing Center, um, and was that a step down situation for you? Was that what? Tell me about that experience coming from some other uh, residential placements. It was definitely a step down. It was very much so a step down. Um, we had a lot of more freedom, if I can say. I mean, we, we couldn't just roam, of course, the campus. But, um, you know, we did have the opportunities to level up and to, to have a little bit more freedom, whether it's a radio in your room, which was big, or um, just having a room to yourself, which was also really, really big to us. Um, so it was definitely a step down. It was like I was in a max prison and then I stepped down. <laughs> and, and how old were you when you first came to UMFS? I was 12. 12. And correct me if I'm wrong, you actually came to the residential program on two separate occasions? Yes. And what was the second placement? When was the second placement? Yeah, you, so if you were 12 the first time, do you remember the second time? The second time, I believe I was 15, 15, I believe. Yeah, a lot had changed at that time. Um, Charter House um, had a brand new building. Yeah, the school. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, brand new school. Uh, cottage 5 was no longer Cottage 5, and that was the original cottage I was in. Um, and I was placed in Cottage 3. Well, you made such a... a 
number of improvements, I understand, when you were at UMFS, at the Child and Family Healing Center. And we have staff who still remember you, um, <laughs> speak so fondly of you. And, and I know that you had a chance to reconnect with some of those folks here uh, a couple of years ago before the pandemic, you would come to speak at a commencement ceremony. And we'll touch on that a little bit more. Um, but I wonder if you can go a little bit more in depth for us about that residential experience. If you can just kind of paint that picture for everyone who's watching. Um, it was, it was, uh, it was difficult. Uh, the first time around, it was very difficult. Um, I lost my mother while I was, um, that first, you know, go around for me, um, which was really, really big, um, for me because I, um, had always dreamed of seeing her again and meeting her again and, you know, becoming acquainted and, you know, maybe, um, even becoming successful enough so that I could help her with her addiction. Um, that was always something that I wanted to know, um, you know, and try to do. But um, unfortunately, she lost her life um, in 2002 while I was a resident um, at UMFS. Um, so it was pretty difficult. Um, I got into quite some trouble. I just, oof, very physically aggressive um, with staff members, with peers. Um, I mean, you name it, I, I probably did it. I actually ran away from office a couple times too, but I ran right back because it was Broad Street and it was at night and I was just like, oh no, this is crazy. I gotta go back. <laughs> so, um, it, I mean, it was, it was difficult. It was very difficult. Um, I didn't understand um, necessarily what it was that, you know, they were asking from me in my treatment. Um, it just felt like I was, telling the same story over and over and over again, but to a different face. So that made a big difference and it makes a big difference, you know, when you feel like you're, you're just repeating yourself and, you know, you're not really seeing the work and what's, you know, what's to come into fruition. Um, so I, I had a difficult time my first go round at um, UMFS, I did. Well, and you, you mentioned earlier, and we touched on uh, the relationship you had with some of the staff. Can you talk mm -hmm. about um, maybe how that was your second time through residential? You, you had some strong bonds. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, how important was that to you during your, during your treatment? Extremely important. Um, I, I had, I, I had some, some sassy staff members. So I didn't really get away with the things that I got away with the first go round. 